Welcome everyone to Data Science for Everyone. Today we're going to be looking at principal component analysis. Let's get started. So this is just going to be um, a continuation um, utilizing our uh, cancer data set. So we had, um, what did I actually use for the data set? We have uh, DF features, DF features. And we also have, um, so we have texture, all this. So, okay, let's kind of let's kind of talk a little bit about uh, what uh, PCA is, or principal component analysis. Um, it's not really, it, again, it's not a full-fledged kind of machine learning algorithm. Instead, it's an unsupervised learning algorithm. And this is, I'm not going to give kind of a full topic on this, but the usefulness of this is that. We take, so for example here, if we look at our, let's look at the info on our data set, okay? We have 30, we have 30 variables here, okay? That can be massive and it can have a tendency to kind of overwork our, our um, machines, okay? So one thing that we would like to do is convert this data and kind of condense it. Okay, so maybe we uh, will do something like, um, you've seen maybe a lot of um, high level dimensional data uh, before, okay? And so it has 30 dimensions, you can't really visualize it very well, but what you can do is you can convert the data into maybe two variables, okay? Uh, two principal components. Um, and then you can visualize the data in a 2D space. Again, we can't visualize something in, in a three or 30 dimensional space. Okay, but we can visualize things in a 2D space. Um, so let's, you know what, let me, let me pull up an image really quickly so you guys can see this in action. So uh, what we can actually talk about is when we look at this. So this is, this is data with two classes. We have two features, but we assume that each of these data points actually are comprised of um, a, lot, uh, a lot of extra data. So this would be the original data and we would have um, two PCA vectors. So if you want to actually have a projection, okay, so we turn this into two principal components itself, okay, over multiple features. Notice here it actually flattens it out and it still keeps its generic attributes going on, okay? So here would be two, um, here is a vector and here's a vector as well. That's where our PCA vectors would come into. And that actually does this um, kind of numerical transformation here. One thing that we do have to do with this though, is we do have to scale the data, okay? Uh, because again, if if we look at our data here, um, let's do head of two. Um, notice everything is on wildly different scales here. So this is uh, in the teens, here is in uh, the hundredths, okay? Here's thousands. Uh, so we need to make sure that they are all scaled properly. So from sklearn uh, dot decomposition import PCA. So then we will create our PCA here and we want, we're going to instantiate it, but then our number of components here is I want two components. Okay. Just very similar to this example that we have here. Um, and so we can do PCA dot fit. And we're doing this on our, um, oh, whoops, I didn't, I didn't, see? I got ahead of myself. I wound up forgetting about scaling the data. So this is actually the PCA. And I'll go, I'll come back and talk to you about it here in a second. Um, so uh, from sklearn dot preprocessing here, uh, import our standard scalar. And then scalar is going to equal our um, our feature data. So we'll do standard scalar. And then we want um, scalar dot fit and then DF features. Uh, and then, oops, we also need to transform the data. Um, and then let's add a line in here and do uh, 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 
scaled data frame is going to be our scalar dot transform on our DF features. So, and we will do this on our scaled data frame. So now we actually, so we scaled the data. We made sure that if we look here, we do scale data frame. Oh, it's oh, it's because it's a, it's actually a matrix in here. Um, uh, and we want cancer dot target names. All right, fine. Doesn't want to deal with it that way. Let's do it this way. Um, so you can see here now, everything is going to be in a similar scale. So again, they've kind of been zeroed out. Um, so you can see here, they all they all are gonna be relatively on the same scale, which is gonna be very useful for us when we're doing PCA. And again, other, other types of methods when we need to scale, we've used the standard scaler before as well. So let's run um, our PCA. So we want our two components. We're going to do it on our scaled data. Um, now we also are going to look at our X PCA. Uh, and so we have to actually do a transformation on the data. Um, so let's do PCA dot transform here and on our scale data. And let's look at X PCA. Uh, oh, um, let's do this, uh, scaled data dot shape. So here you can see here we have 569 um, um, observations with 30 columns. But if we look at our X PCA and we look at the shape, notice it's two now. So it took that 30 dimensional data set that we had and we converted it into a, two, uh, a 2D representation. So let's go on and actually maybe plot this out. Um, so do um, figure and we want uh, figure size here. I want it 12 by 12. Let's do plt.scatter. Um, so X PCA uh, and we want all the way up through, uh, we want everything through zero, uh, and we want what? C here, our color scheme is going to be from our cancer data, and we want the target. Uh, and then I think the C map, I think we're going to be fine with this one. So plt.x label uh, first. Uh, PC for principal component, plt.y label here is second principal component. And we can run this. Oh, what didn't it like? Oh, whoops, I forgot to put the y axis in here. Uh, PCA, everything, but I want one. So actually, notice here now our data, we could not, we could not actually this is a little big um, let me do eight by eight okay that's better so before we couldn't even visualize the data but once we compacted our data and we transformed our data we're able to actually visualize that there are definitely two sections inside of this data for our cancer component and if you remember we had one that was benign one that was um, uh, Malignant. Okay, so let's actually maybe um, think about. Hopefully, maybe we could. Well, we can see that they're in two classes. Okay, but the problem is, is that talking about interpreting the results from PCA or interpreting the components, let's say, is a bit of a problem. Okay, we took. 30 dimensions of data and compacted everything into two. So we did a dimensionality reduction. The cost 
of that dimensionality reduction is we're not easily able to understand the components, each of these components, because they are basically these large densities of information and data. So um, the components are going to con correspond to combinations of our original features from our, uh, from our data frame. Okay, and these components, again, are going to be stored as attributes inside of uh, the PCA. Uh, so we can look at our PCA.components with an underscore there. And you can see that we have, we have all of this, okay? Now this is a NumPy array. Now each row of this is going to represent a principal component. Now each column is going to represent back to the original feature that it belongs to. Now this means nothing to us if we look at it this way. So let's go about this in looking at it as, um, uh, let's create a components data frame with our data, and but we can visualize this. That's that's actually the beautiful part. Okay, so let's do, um, let me zoom out just a little bit. I know this is gonna be big. Um, so I'll do, And I want this to be uh, 12 by 8. Um, and let's do sns.heatmap. And we have our, our components here. And you know what? I don't, I don't know what color it's going to pop up as, but we'll, we'll, let's just do this for now. Uh, I don't like that at all doesn't look good. So let's do um, C map here and let's do plasma. Maybe we could do Verdellis, but that looks even worse. But um, this heat map basically is color coding, okay? So where each of these, we have our component one and our component two, and we can see here at what propensity these, um, uh, the correlation is between the features and the component itself. Okay, so these darker colors in here have a low, uh, a, low um, a low correlation to them. The higher the number, the higher the correlation to them. Um, and so this should, again, as long as you have knowledge about your data and you have a lot of domain knowledge, you should be able to read more about this. Again, if we had, if, again, I don't know anything about cancer, I'm not a medical doctor or anything. And so, But for medical doctors, they would be able to talk about each of these in turn. So this is where if you don't have domain knowledge, you would need to go and find someone that does have the domain knowledge and ask them for help in uh, discussing what the data actually means. So just, yeah, before, maybe before we uh, leave, let me at least talk about looking at what kind of happens with PCA. Um, the previous figure was okay. So, but this would be maybe our original data and we do our transformation, it does flatten out. So um, we can, again, so if we, for example, we drop a component, it actually winds up looking like a line, okay? Um, and so if we also add in the rotation back, this is how you can add in the discussion. So again, here there's, there's all this volatility in here. When we transform the data, we're going to lose that. And then we can also add the rotation back in with the second feature. And again, we have this nice straight line. So notice it takes goes from this mess, this jumbled mess, into actually something that's a nice line. Um, thank you guys for watching. If you like this, please comment, subscribe, and uh, let us know what you're thinking. Um, thanks. Bye.